we gonna we gonna bring it over to the to the real live Hall of Fame, the Gas Hall of Fame. We are gonna put our our Gas Hall of Fame hats on. So we got our committee right here, Gas Hall of Fame committee. Each one of the panel members has decided upon a fringe Hall of Fame, per, uh, basically candidate. Somebody that hasn't been inducted yet that we wanna we wanna induct into the Hall of Fame. We gonna we gonna state our case for 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 the Hall of Fame. For each of these respective uh, players, um, I'm gonna lead it off. I'm I'm gonna go first. Um, since we talking hoops, we talking basketball, we talking playoffs. I want I want to throw a nomination. I've seen folks on Twitter, NBA Twitter, talking about my man Ben Wallace. So I'm gonna talk about Ben Wallace and why Ben Wallace isn't in the Hall of Fame. And I'm not even going I'm not even gonna mention any statistics on you because the statistics don't do Ben Wallace any any any. Any justice. The statistics Ben Wallace puts up is the kind of statistics that your son would put up in the game, and you come back and he'd be like, "You'd be like, damn, that's that's all you did," and you'd be thinking like, "Yo, pops, but I was putting in big time work, and you just don't get it. Like you wouldn't get it if you weren't there." The truth be told, <laughs> <laughs> that's the type of numbers that Ben Wallace puts up because we're talking about like his career numbers is definitely single digits. So like it's hard to vote for a Hall of Fame inductee when you're talking about guys are going up against guys that are putting up twenty. 50, at least at least 18 20 points a game even guys that aren't considered necessarily scorers even Jason Kidd put up 18 you know 15 16 17 18 points a game you know what I'm saying in in good season so Ben Wallace points forget the points forget about it just you got to remember presence and you got to remember the fact that the Pistons team was that was a team full of underdogs and basically they led that team he was the leader of that team he was the most specialized defensive force in the in the um in the league so I, I will say it like this if if guys like Dennis Rodman if guys like Ron Artest guys like Bruce Bowen I mentioned uh, I don't think he's in the he's in the he's in the fame but guys like that they have their place in history and I think the NBA needs to respect where defense plays in the game guys like in the league right now like Pat Beverly PJ Tucker them guys that are literally defensive specialists need more love so that's why I say I'm starting a campaign. Ben Wallace for the Hall of Fame. What y'all what y'all think, man? What y'all think about Ben? Y'all think he deserves some love for the Hall of Fame? Oh yeah, man. I'm with I'm with you 100 percent man. Ben Wallace, the best, the best hey, hey, the best defensive player under seven feet that I've ever seen. Now we got some seven footers that we're just elite on the defensive end. But when we're talking about under – I guess Dwight Howard, too. But I'll say Ben Wallace even better than Dwight Howard in his prime, man. Like, Ben Wallace Ben Wallace was the reason that the Detroit Pistons were as good as they were because they had that anchor. They had that anchor in that middle. And, yeah, man, shot. Another thing I, another thing I was talking about was the, was the energy that, uh, that guys bring, man. And uh, we was talking about that earlier. That's priceless, man. Ben Wallace with that fro, man, he had all them uh, – 10, 10, 12 year old Auburn Hills suburbanites with the with the froze on. <laughs> he changed the whole Auburn Palace, man. So uh shout out to Ben Wallace. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, bro. 100 percent man. 100 percent T, you want to go first? I don't even want to dignify <laughs> this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With a response. Last week on my man Ben, we're going to have the opportunity. Yeah, right. to the <laughs> look, man. Look, man. I, I talk. Ben Wallace didn't even average six points a game. Um, and I, I do think he played the game the right way, and there's something to be said about that. Um, but also, at the same time, if, if my six year old son came home, with five points, we will be talking about um, <laughs> did he did he give his did he give his best effort? So um, to have a career at six points per game, I, that, that's still an achievement. You still went to the NBA. I don't want to take anything away from this guy. He's the four time he's a four time defensive player of the year. I don't want to take anything away from him, but at the same time, uh, he 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 had a, a hot six years, um, and he played. <laughs> He, he, he plays Shaq probably better than 95% of the guys, but numbers uh, got to be the determinant factor as to what gets you in the Hall of Fame. I would hate to have a career. Uh, let's say a Chris Webber. I mean, are, are Chris Webber's not in the Hall of Fame yet. Are we putting Ben Wallace – are we really putting Ben Wallace in the Hall of Fame before Chris Webber? Ben Wallace yes. averaged yes. – Ben Wallace averaged six points for the – 
to be the defensive animal that he is, right? He averaged less than ten rebounds a game. Chris Webber averaged more rebounds and twenty points. Why? Come on, man. If I'm Chris Wallace, uh, if I'm Chris uh, Chris Webber, uh, I'm burning the Hall of Fame down. If you put Ben Wallace in it, if you put a bust in there with my man Afro all while, and I averaged a dub, and he couldn't even get six points in the league. Man, no, I'm going crazy. I'm not putting Webber Ben Wallace. Didn't win nothing though. I love Bruh, Webber. Okay, I love Webber. Not only that, Ben Wallace is an All NBA player. Multiple years, he averaged six points and was All NBA about four or five times. What does that tell you about how great this man was on defense? Look, I like numbers. I, I love numbers, man. Numbers tell ben a Wallace, good story, but they don't. Ben tell Wallace a is story. not. Ben Wallace ben is not elite on defense. The best. He was elite. The best I've but, ever seen. Uh, yeah, but you, I'm not putting you in the Hall of Fame for being elite one dimensional player. Like, but if you're elite not, on offense alone, you can get in. So if someone's elite only on offense, they good. But if they're elite only on defense, they not in. That's. It, it don't make sense. Yeah, to me. yeah, <laughs> that's, fair that's not right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's not a one-sided basketball game, and that's the problem. Yes, man. I mean, ben, you, you, act, you act like Ben Wallace was on that team by himself, man. Richard Hamilton well, was on that team. Talk, talk Is he a Hall of Famer? No, none of them are. Exactly, none of them. <laughs> they they were, Hall of Famer? Oh, that was you're telling me no chat, no Hall of Famers from that championship team. None. They were just in the running for four years, five years. One Not one Hall of Famer. There's no no champion, no no Hall of Famers on there though. The closest yeah, thing you might get, I think Sheed Wallace. Rasheed, probably, if you were to give anybody Rasheed, a vote, it would be Sheed. I'd say Rasheed is the closest Wallace thing you're gonna get. Famer, man. Ben Wallace is not. He is an Hall of Famer. Like putting my ballot in. Like all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my it. vote. It's it's simple. It's gonna be a nod for me. Uh, and it's really ben just Wallace based off behind Chris Weber. <laughs> Initially, bro, come on, bro. You're talking about before either of them were who they became, man. Ben Wallace, the, maybe the best defender of my era. Maybe I, I still put Shaq ahead of him and KG. But Ben Wallace, man, he was un, unreal, unreal defending the paint. Unreal, bro. Four time defensive player of the year. How does that even happen? When was the last? Is that ever gonna happen again? <laughs> no, then, then, uh, then Matumbo do it. Hall of Famer, thank you. Is it ever gonna happen? Hey, if you do that, but, that's basically a shoe in. Four time defensive player. Nah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not putting them in the same reason. I'm not putting uh, uh, Draymond Green in. Like, bro, you're you're you're, you're an elite role player. Draymond but Green. Go, is bro. Wallace, bro. If the <laughs> Golden State Warriors had Big Wallace, if the Golden State Warriors <laughs> totally had Big Wallace, bro. It wouldn't even. It would. They would. They would probably have six straight chips. Stop. Bro. Draymond Green has not been Wallace, bro. Draymond Green was disrespecting Charles Barkley, and he not Charles Barkley. <laughs> anyway, man, I, I'm not even gonna bore you with none of the stats. I feel like T hit all those for me. Um, my whole thing though was 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 Nick's argument, man. When you when you mentioned, um, you know, you had to be there to see it or or to feel it or whatever, like. So that that's the thing. It's the Hall of Fame. It's not the Hall of Very Good. If if you if your argument has to involve me seeing him live or being there, then it, then it, it had to be Hall of Fame. You got to trans transcend time. Like it can't be. Oh, you know, you had to be in the moment to 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 see what he was doing. Like nah, they, these guys. The guy that I'm gonna present, I feel like has transcended time, and he's gonna be talked about whether he gets in or not. Because uh, that's just the level of talent that you got to possess, in my opinion, to be to be in the Hall of Fame. But uh, I can I can I can go ahead and go next, man. Since we yeah, since we nice and, yeah, I I you nice and ready, oh uh, <laughs> yeah, batter up, man. I'm gonna go ahead and nominate Barry Bonds, man. Like, so we all know baseball is not the most exciting sport, right? What's the most exciting thing in the game? Home runs. That's the most exciting thing in the game. It, it, everybody cheers. Everybody loves it. You know what I'm saying? I, I always buy seats in the outfield in hopes to catch a home run. It's just it's just how I do it. So who has the most home runs in all of Major League Baseball throughout the 100-year history of the sport? Barry Bonds, 762 home runs. So only three people that's even hit 700. So only two people that have hit over 750. He's one of one. And they want to deny this man for steroids when how many players have – come out and, and taking steroids and, and admitted to taking steroids during the time period that he played? Was he really cheating if everyone was doing it? Is that really cheating? I don't think so. 
I don't think there's there's a reason to really deny this man uh, the Hall of Fame. And anybody who knows baseball, uh, you could break down his swing. Barry Bonds has one of the greatest swings of all time. Of all time. That man could hit. He was getting hits before the steroids. Now, you can make the complaint, oh, you know, well, he took the steroids, the ball started going a little further. Whatever, man. Like, I, you have to have the swing to hit the ball to get the home runs. I've played baseball. Hitting the baseball is the hardest thing to do in sports. If you think about it, there's no other sports where if you're three for ten, you did a damn good job. No other sport allows that except baseball. If you go three for ten in baseball, hitting the, hitting the ball, you are amazing. Barry Bonds not only hit major home runs, he hit for a high average. I believe his he ended his career with a 298 average, something like that. So really, there's there's absolutely no reason to deny Barry Bonds. It's completely asinine. Uh, Barry's got to get in, and 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 it's crazy because I think time is running out. I think his eligibility is actually going to run out. So we're looking at a situation where Barry Bonds probably won't even get into the Hall of Fame, uh, which is criminal in my opinion. But I think it's all good because I think he's going to transcend even the Hall of Fame. Because even if you don't put him in, who has the most home runs in the history of ga- of the ba- of the game of baseball? Barry Bonds, and that is what people care the most about when it comes to baseball. So Hall of Fame or not, nah, man, I think this one's a no-brainer. I just want to thank you for bringing a, a serious contender to the Hall of Fame debate, man. <laughs> <laughs> because Barry Bonds deserves to be in that Hall of Fame. Uh, if They're only keeping him out because of steroids. It was an entire era of steroids. I mean, uh, Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, you can't tell me those guys weren't on steroids. Mike Piazza is in the Hall of Fame. I'm not even a baseball guy, and I know this stuff. And Barry Bonds has about 200 more home runs, hit over 200 more home runs than Mike Piazza. Um, it's, it's these old reporters, and, and it's really what's killing baseball, man. These old traditional reporters and trying to keep history and all that stuff, man. Let, let the guy in, man. And outside of the home runs, he could defend. He could run. Like, it wasn't just I step up to the plate and crank home runs. The guy was a complete baseball player. So, he, I like him. He's in. They should let him in, man. Let my man Roger Clemens in, too. Let them both in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I agree, man. I, I agree. I agree with that, man. I think, uh, I think you know, for people that look at this as a morality issue, you got some weird morals, man. I could give a damn about steroids, <laughs> especially if everybody doing them, man. Like, everybody taking creatine. They take it. Listen, listen. End of the day, man, you know what this stuff does to your body. If that's the what you're willing to put in it, that's the unnatural way you're willing to go. Hey, do you do you? We're always going to have more respect for the guy that didn't do that. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, they always going to get tested when it comes out. We always going to have more respect for the guys that did it clean. No matter what, even when he gets in, there's always going to be the asterisk on Barry Bonds name steroids. So that's going to carry with him. We already know that. What's the point of keeping him out if we already know that? You know what I mean? Now, the one thing I will say just to defend Major League Baseball or at least the Hall of Fame, is that they haven't let any of these steroid guys in. These guys that have been really super linked, connected to steroid era, they're not letting them in. So if they're not going to let Barry in, just make sure we don't let none of these dudes in, and I can be okay with it. But I do think that he deserves to be in, man. That's too many home runs to be – to die not in the Hall of Fame, knowing you were the best hitter of all time. Like, I mean, imagine having the most touchdown passes in NFL history and not being in the Hall of Fame. Because it's steroids. It wouldn't give it a makes damn. no sense. It, no one, no nah. one would care. It makes no sense. And the, and the famous words of uh, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> yeah, nah. Real, real talk, though. Another thing, I'll, 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 I'll back the Barry, Barry, the, Barry, uh, the Barry campaign. So that's four for four. Uh, I'll back the Barry, the Barry Bonds campaign simply because he was a Hall of Famer before he even took steroids. So... Uh, any way you want to slice it. And then ultimately, if you're looking at that era and you're looking at all the greats, in that era, like besides Ken Griffey Jr., I, I don't know many that wasn't juicing. Like Alex Rodriguez, Roger Clemens, you named them. Like these guys were bigger. They, these guys were baseball. They made baseball huge. And like I said, Bonds is a Hall of Famer without the steroids. He was a he was a multiple time Gold Glover. That dude had the skill set before he took the roids. So you know he's in, he's we would have been in before that. So he gets my vote. Uh, who's who's next up? I guess uh, T, right? You 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 next up, right? Who's your? Oh yeah. By the yeah. way, everybody that's tuning in, uh, check out the poll on the, on the Twitter. So far, we got one unanimous, and we got a split 
vote out on Ben Wallace. So go ahead and crowd, go ahead and 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 pull for Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace needs y'all votes. <laughs> Jump in on the Twitter mm-hmm. poll. T, who is your your, your Hall of Fame uh, nomination? I'm gonna keep it uh, short and sweet, man. And uh, he's still active, but I, I know there might be a debate about him. But my guy Frank Gore, man, um, I'm not gonna throw too many stats at you. I've said it before. You hear this in sports, man. Your best ability is availability. This guy got drafted in 2005 and has been a bell cow back his entire career, man. He's not running uh, sweeps and all this stuff. He's through the tackles. Uh, he's great in pass protection. And he's always – he's consistently on the field. He's consistently been healthy. Um, you can't take anything away from him. He's number three on the on the rushing list, and he's still chipping away. He's still chipping away. So I'm going to go Frank Gore. I like Man, that. I, oh, go ahead, Scrap. Go ahead, Scrap. Yeah, I'm thinking we about to say the same thing, but I think I like that, and I I, I back that train too. Yeah, I've been on the Frank the Frank Frank train uh for a minute now, bro. Because you know what I'm saying. One thing I'll say, I'm gonna quote. I'm 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 feeling the quotes today. I'm gonna quote Jada Kiss, and you you can't say you nice until you show me longevity. In the words of Jada Kiss and Frank Gore, that is that is literally the anthem that will ride on his Hall of Fame statue. Is longevity. That man is continually putting up numbers, not like crazy numbers. So something needs to be said for consistency in in in, in the story of the tortoise and the hare, my friend. That man just kept on trucking at a certain speed, and he's still doing it. And I think honestly, you put him out there this year. I think he's still gonna give you probably five hundred plus yards. So people talk about Adrian Peterson because Adrian Peterson had some of the greatest seasons in the history of the NFL, but they should also talk about Frank Gore for that consistency, that longevity. Um, you don't really see too many backs doing it like that at that age. Um, God bless him. And, um, you know, he's still doing it. So, yeah, definitely yep. is my vote. Yeah, man. Uh, at first, man, when we were talking about this in the, in the pre-show, I was a little apprehensive on Frank Gore. But honestly, man, Gore definitely deserves it. I, I've always liked Gore's game. And uh, it, it's a no-brainer that Adrian Peterson is a Hall of Famer, right? I don't think anyone is even going to question that. Well, Gore's got more career rushing yards than Adrian Peterson by about a thousand, and that's with AP having a two thousand yard season. So, I mean, if you go on AP in the Hall of Fame, I don't really see how you can't go Gore. I mean, they both shown us longevity. Frank Gore's still pushing, AP's still pushing. I really just put them in the same category, man. I know Frank Gore might not have hit the the heights that AP did in his career, but that longevity means a lot, especially at that running back position when you see guys not even last 10 years, man, to see a guy go 10 plus is amazing. So Frank Gore is a definite Hall of Famer for longevity alone. And then you can go ahead and get into his numbers after that. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that, Rome. Frank Gore, hands down, man. You talking about second all t- well, I'm sorry, third all time leading rusher. But if he plays for two more seasons, he could very well be the second all time leading leading rusher and overtake Walter Payton. Imagine that overtaking Walter Payton. I mean, now he would be the uh, had the most seasons accrued in that top five if he did that. But at the same time, I mean, 16 seasons, you're the second all time leading rusher. I think it's well worth it. Uh, Frank Gore is unquestioned Hall of Famer. Any guy that can adjust to errors the way he has still find a way to be productive in the later stages. I mean, that's that's what Hall of Fame caliber is all about. So I definitely give the nod to Frank Gore as a Hall of Famer. I guess it, it is it on me. Yeah, you got the last nomination right, for the Hall of Fame, Gas Hall of Fame. Who you got? All right, man. So uh, my nomination for the Gas Hall of Fame is my guy, none other than Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson. I don't know what name he goes by these days, but we'll call him Ocho Cinco Johnson. That's my guy, man. Uh, number of reasons I believe he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, first, I'll start with. With the with the with the era, the period of dominance that he had, um, we're talking about a three-time first-team All-Pro wide receiver, uh, back-to-back-to-back seasons. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Um, he was he was he was running he was running it in, in, in his prime. Uh, and then after that, he he went. I mean, before that, I'm sorry, he had second-team All-Pro. I'm All-Pro. So, dude, been doing it. I mean, four straight seasons of All-Pro football. I think that matters. Six-time Pro Bowler, I think that matters. Now we'll get to the stats. I'm not going to get into all the Bengals records he has because he holds essentially every single Bengals receiving record, but who cares about about the team records? What everybody's going to look at 
it's his all-time receiving record because when you look at the rankings, I mean, my man is he's not he's not as high as you might want to see a Hall of Fame receiver, right? He's around 35, 36 all-time receiving yards. But if you look at the names above him, they're all surefire Hall of Famers. I mean, there's not a name on that list above him that I don't think is getting in. Julio Jones, uh, you know, Reggie Wayne, you know, uh, Calvin Johnson, Antonio Gates, Michael Irvin. Like, these are guys <laughs> that are above him. You know? <laughs> and don't get me wrong. Even the guys right above him are, are questionable. Uh, you know, Calvin Johnson's there at 31. We know he's getting in because we know he was great while he did it. Chad Johnson didn't have a crazy long career, a crazy long prime. While he was doing it, he was exceptional. So I think he deserves a gold jacket. Chad Otto Single gets my vote, man. Oh, Bryce, man, why why you have to do this, man? Why you have Somebody to do this? Somebody gotta have a controversial one, man. Come on, man. man. Let's get Chad, on the is, Chad is like my hero, man. I, I love that man when I was coming up playing football, man. Like I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna have to do this, man. I don't want to do this, but you're gonna make me do this, man. He's not a Hall of Famer. Chad Johnson is not a Hall of Famer, bro. I'm sorry. I want him to get in. If he gets in, it won't happen. I'll celebrate. But it's just not going to happen, man. I mean, Antonio Brown has already surpassed him in receiving yards. Jason Witten has passed him in receiving yards. Jason, Jason <laughs> slow-footed Witten, man. Come on, man. Like, as much as I want Chad to be in there, and I'm glad that you mentioned his, his era of dominance. I, I really like the way that you put it. But I got to keep it real. There was no era of dominance for Chad. He was never the best receiver in the league at any point, at any given time in the season. He was never better than T.O. He was never better than Randy Moss. Any season that Chad played, all pro or not, he was not the best receiver in the game. And that's just what it is. Uh, he was my favorite at times. I had the Bengals jersey. I was rooting for him. But there was no point in time where, where people were really sitting there saying, Chad Johnson is the most dominant, the most dominant, maybe one of, not the. So I just, I got to disagree with him in the Hall of Fame, man. I don't, I don't see it. I want to see it, but I don't. Ah, man, wrong. I, I got to jump in and defend and defend Chad Johnson. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. I got to jump in. I got to jump in and defend Chad Johnson, man. Cause like, with the, only cause of one thing you said, wrong. Cause I, that's what really, what really got to me. You said that he wasn't the best receiver in the league during the point where he was at his best. And I got to disagree with you because, like, that during that time, he was actually – he had a couple seasons. He's had probably about a good seven, six or seven years where he was really, 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 really good. But there was – there was that was during the time when Randy Moss was, like, kind of like, you know, in Oakland. Everyone forgets about that. Like, oh, yeah, Randy Moss is the greatest receiver of all time. And he was on Oakland playing, like, garbage for a number of years while Chad Johnson was putting up big-time numbers. Um, with the Bengals. So, I mean, and you look at other guys that were doing it during that time, bro, like Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, like he was doing it during that same era, you know, and T.O., yeah, T.O. was T.O. was great when he was great, but Chad Johnson, he had a year or two where he was the best receiver in the league in football, and that offense was 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 like that. So, I, I, I'll give him a little love. He's a, he's no. a French Hall of Famer, though. I, I, I'll say that. But you know he, you can't say he Tio, was, never- was better than Chad every year that he played, with maybe the exception of like that one year he was hurt where Tio was hurt. I think it was like oh five Tio didn't play. So I'll give you Chad over a hurt Tio, but he was never better than Tio at any from from what what was Chad's career like two thousand two thousand eleven over uh, Cowboys Tio. No. Absolutely. Not, not, you, no. you have to take Chad at that point. You have to take, what is that, 06, 06 Chad to 08 Chad? You got to take that Chad. We're not talking about the, the 05 Chad where he's getting 1,400 yards, nine touchdowns. That's the Chad I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but even even in those years, even in those years, T.O., same, same numbers, 16 touchdowns, 13 touchdowns. Chad was just never as good as these other guys, man. I'm, I'm telling no, you, he no, was always right. the second right. fiddle. Chad wasn't as ever as good as T.O. or Randy Moss, but it's not just two guys that have receiver to make the Hall of Fame. It's not like hey, you had to be the very best the whole time you was playing. Like, nah, man, this dude had a stretch where there wasn't a receiver that was way that was really better, better than him. You could say, hey, he was playing on the same level as these guys, Randy Moss. T.O. And these aren't just Hall of Fame receivers. These are all-time best receivers. So, you know, you had to be an all-time best to be a Hall of Famer. I think we start getting into another conversation, maybe. 
Look, man, yeah, you I do. Mean, you do. It's, it's the Hall of Fame, not the Hall of Very Good. Go ahead, T. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to throw you off. No, nah, you good, man. Because I, I'm, I'm with you, man. I've been letting these guys talk because <laughs> um, I, I think the reason we remember Chad so fondly is because of how he played the game uh, off the field. You know, the the gold fronts, change, changing the name. He's the prototypical prima donna wide receiver. I mean, he sold tickets. I mean, he made. We having a Hall of Fame discussion. He made his own Hall of Fame jacket and put it on on the yeah. Saturday. You know what I'm saying? He was, in my opinion, he was a, a poor man's T.O. when it came to that sort of antic type situation. But uh, uh, he's not a Hall of Famer. Uh, you, you guys are – If I played a lot of Madden in these days. Ocho Cinco wasn't a threat, man. Uh, you guys are missing you – guys, you guys are missing guys, man. You guys are missing uh, receivers. Was, was Andre Johnson not in the NFL? <laughs> he never played great too. Andre never Johnson. Played. Andre Johnson was good, but is you saying he's better than than Chad Johnson? Like I don't know. They're yes. kind of they got the yes. same career. Andre Johnson was considered the best receiver when he played. Uh, Chad Johnson does not have a fifteen hundred yard season. Andre Johnson has three. Um, there's a lot of receivers that need to get and in it, before. And we an start era where they didn't throw it either. And, and, and Chad Johnson. Yeah. Chad Johnson. What are you talking about? Chad Johnson played on a, a lot of bad teams where. No, no, I will say this. Chad Johnson definitely played in an era where they threw the ball uh, a ton. And he played on a team where he had a, they he had were like behind. A thousand yards on that team. Bruh, he was, they, they, right, because the Bengals were bums. He was behind every game, no, and they're throwing the ball, throwing the ball. The ball. No, 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 the Bengals. Up until, up until, up until Kimo Van Olhoff enrolled on my man's ankle, the, 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 the Bengals was on their way to potentially a, play, a, a nice little playoff run. How? How when the when the Steelers were dominating, they weren't dominating until yo they were they, yo my man threw a touchdown and 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 they were about to they were about to win that game and then my man did a dirty play rolled over his ankle Carson Palmer was never the same and they actually he ended up Look, leaving. Man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys that have better numbers than Chad Johnson that aren't in that Hall of Fame. Mushin Muhammad, he has more <laughs> yards. He doesn't have better numbers. He has more yards. All right, man. <laughs> Troy Holt. How many touchdowns right, right. did he have? How many touchdowns right. did he have? Come 62. On. They matter. Six, they matter. 62. Torrey Holt on the Hall of Fame? Lucian Muhammad has 62 touchdowns. Torrey right. Holt is not in the Hall of Fame. Roddy White is not in the Hall of Fame. Jimmy, Jimmy Smith is not in the Hall of Fame. Like, there's a ton of guys. Uh, let me let me keep going, man. Uh, Brandon Marshall has better numbers than him. Yeah. Heinz Ward has – Derek Mason yeah. has better numbers than him. Calvin Johnson – he won't even get in. Those uh, guys aren't better than him, though. All right, man. Rod Smith has better numbers than him. Uh, like w- Reggie Wayne isn't in. Steve Smith isn't in. How are we put all better? Ocho- Steve How Smith we put those- I'll take Steve Smith over over over. Uh, Anquan Bolden. Anquan Bolden isn't in yet. We still got to, and we still got to put Fitzgerald in. Like he's not going. And nah, he's not. Nah. He appears to be a good guy, but he's not going. He's not. He's, he's, no. he's probably not. He's probably not, but he's on my ballot. One thing I'll say, bro, too, I'm, 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 I'm really reaching on this, but one thing I'll say about, about, about the Hall of Fame, bro, is, yo, I know it's about football, but, yo, when it comes to being a true – you know, literally an icon, entertainer, and just like a spectacle. Chad Johnson was all of that, and then some. So for the entertainment but it didn't points, work, but know, it, it didn't work for T.O. If Chad Johnson would have retired after his last All Pro season, he would have been a Hall of Famer. <laughs> nah, it, it did not work. Nah. Yeah, and, I, and I don't want to discredit Chad Johnson because here, uh, uh, other cornerbacks, other receivers, will tell you about how tough this guy is in route running, but. No, man. The, 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 the list to get in at receiver is so stacked that Chad just won't – he just won't make it. And the guys that are still playing, Julio has to get in. Like, the guys that are still playing are going to get in above him. Man. Unfortunately, he, he won't get the bust in camp. But he said he I mean, got a 14-year bust in his house. So, you know what I'm saying? He's a winner in his own mind. <laughs> I mean, the truth is, man, he was, he was never – all that man, like like I'm I'm telling you, man. You, you talking about this era of dominance? It didn't exist. You said touchdowns matter. Both Randy no. and To have over 150 touchdowns. Chad's got 67, bro. Like, come on, what what era of dominance? He was never even really comparable with those two. 
T said it best. It, he's a poor man's T.O. And, and I'm, I, it breaks my heart you're making me do this, man. Like, I love Chad, man. Chad was my guy. But he was just never what these other dudes were. He's not even what, what uh, some of these dudes today are, man. Like, I take DeAndre, Julio, like, the list, the list of people in front of Chad, man, like, it's, it's long. It's long. Man, Michael Thomas in 99 and Madden and Chad Johnson's a Hall of Famer, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it, man. Hey, look, man, look, look, hey, look, the whole the whole point of bringing up certain guys, you know, this is for the audience, man. We we want to get a good debate in. And these are guys that are standouts in sports culture, you know what I mean? And we got we gotta debate guys like Chad Ocho Cinco, man. Chances are the dude won't be able to to snake his way into the Hall of Fame, but Hey man, I don't want y'all to downplay his uh his three years of of top notch football, top level football. Let the polls be shown. He, he has a fifty percent vote for a, for a yes right now. That's all I know. <laughs> hey, I, I 